great to see everyone here in today's investing show. A lot of new, not some new people. Uh, some people seeing around here. We got Jeff and Charlie. We got Tom, Chris, we got Brendan. Awesome guys! Thanks for joining uh, here today. Uh, Megan's going to be out uh, for today's session. Of course, my name is Scott Royal Smith. I'm the owner of Royal Legal Solutions. Um, and today we're going to be talking through a new offering um, that we have as a new division here in Royal Legal Solutions, which is our Royal Insurance. Um, so what we've done is in our effort to be able to create a truly one-stop shop for real estate investors. As you guys know, we've already in-housed all of the asset protection um, and the estate planning. Uh, we have an in-house uh, CPA and MBA and a CFO uh, to be able to cover off on any of the financial or tax pieces toward uh, streamlining your taxes, improving your tax rates, as well as making sure that your investments are performing um, optimally uh, to increase your total cash flow, which is how you increase your speed to financial freedom. Uh, and then today we're adding um, and announcing for you guys, <laughs> I'm going to be talking to you guys a little bit um, about our new Royal Insurance Division um, that will be able to offer holistic, integrated, and efficient insurance solutions uh, specifically tailored for real estate investors. And we've actually developed this because of the feedback that we've gotten from uh, you all. Hey, Julie, great to see you. Uh, popping on video. Always great to see your face. Um, and uh, <clears throat> so what we have is... Um, uh, been, of course, meeting with uh, investors over the, all of the years, right? And one of the things that we always hear about, which is, hey, well, you know, I put together my asset protection pieces and now what do I need to do with my insurances uh, for all my insurances that I need to have? What do, you, what do I need for my property insurance? Do I need like an umbrella policy? Should I be thinking about life insurance policies to take care of my family um, and make sure that, you know, everything and all my end of life stuff is taken care of appropriately there. Um, and also like what types of investment opportunities are available through insurance. So if you guys have heard of like whole overfunded whole life insurance policies, when you're in that higher net worth range, that kind of stuff can start to make a lot of sense. Um, and so what we're able to do by in-housing Royal Insurance um, as a new division underneath Royal Legal Solutions and have that as part of our one-stop shop, um, of course, I think Aaron Porter just jumped in and he's on screen here. He is our insurance uh, insurance guy. Um, he also has partnered with a, a number of um, super high powered uh, uh, insurance uh, directors, one of them actually being his brother um, into it as well, too. That's also part of uh, that uh, insurance division uh, of Royal Legal Solutions. So have a strong team of really experienced people in the insurance game. And then what we've done is, we said, great, well, let's, let's position these insurance offerings to make sure that they're exactly what real estate investors need, right? So we can cater specifically to the real estate investor market and the small business owner market um, because it's the majority of our clients. So um, unlike any other insurance uh, company or agency that you'd work with before, uh, we just specialize in that niche and that's all we uh, plan on serving. Um, and our plan is to go deep into that niche instead of wide. Mm -hmm. Um, so let's go ahead and talk through just like a little bit of the basics of like where does insurance fit um, into like our protection models um, that we have here. So you guys can see here, um, seeing my document camera, start trying to diagram some of this stuff out for you. So the first thing uh, we typically think about as real estate investors is what? You got to buy deals, right? You say, great. Every seminar that you ever went to always said, what do you need to do? You need to get out there. You need to buy some deals, find those properties, lock them down. Right. And he said, great. I'm going to go out there and buy deals. Now what? <laughs> I bought deals. And that's usually where the education stopped was at this buy deal part of the training. And that's where we're picking up here with, with our last covers off on everything else that happens after that point. So after you buy a deal, you probably heard from maybe your CPAs or other investor buddies or whatever is, hey, just have insurance. And you're going to have some of that insurance that's going to be like bank required, which is going to be what? That's that property insurance, right? This is going to be like your fire, flood, et cetera. Yeah. This insurance that you buy here. How many people think that that insurance is to protect you? Because it ain't. That insurance is there to protect the bank. That's why the bank requires it. 
because they say, great, this insurance policy now will go out and pay if something happens to this property with it, right? We also know that the bank, this is for the bank's protection from an accident that could occur on the property. But we also know the bank is also uh, there because they have a security interest in the property because they have the loan, right? So the bank is double covered here. It says, asset burns down, I get paid. Asset doesn't get paid uh, paid on, I get to take it from a foreclosure action. So the bank's position here is pretty secure, although something horrible might happen to you, right? You could go bankrupt, but the bank is going to be fine with these minimal protections. So what's that next level of protection looking like on the insurance front? The next level of protection you're going to have there is going to be umbrella insurance policies. And that these types of policies help cover it off again other accidents. So let's say that you have your auto policy. Your auto policy is too low. So I think here in Utah, the minimum for your auto policy is $12,000 a year, right? That, I mean, that's your the state required minimums. Now, what happens is what happens if the claim, $12,000 minimum, but how, who thinks that how often this is actually going to be the total extent of the damages for medical bills and for our, the repair of the car and all of the other passengers that might be in that other car you hit or that your son hit while he was out driving around and goofing around? This ain't going to cut it, right? So I'll say, well, I could either try to figure out what are all of the individual risks that I might have from like auto policies or other things that could come up in my life, right? That could cause injury. Or what I can do is I'll just buy one umbrella policy and it's going to have a broad spectrum of coverage. So why we like this is this is, you know, this gives us broad coverage of what is the gap. So maybe I can take a low auto policy limit and then I say, cool, but I'm going to stack that with an umbrella policy here. So that way, anything that comes up in life with that insurance will protect it will that the insurance can protect it will protect. Hey Scott, um, do you want us to, us to ask questions now, or would you rather us wait till you're you're finished and then ask questions? Um, let's let me get off on just one last point here, and then we'll open up the floor then to talk about the insurance. Perfect. Um, so as we come in here with our insurance uh, insurance coverage here, this is like our broad uh, our broad insurance coverage, and that the one limitation that we have here for insurance. So the limitation is this is just about accidents, right? And low dollar claims. Why low dollar claims? Because insurance companies will pay out on low dollar claims. They almost always try to fight anything that's a high dollar claim, right? And then limitations on accidents, meaning like stuff like this, right? Where it's like, hey, we had um, $12,000 of coverage, but also it's limitations on just accidents. So if there's ever a lawsuit against you based upon like a rental agreement or a lease agreement, per, uh, pro property purchase contract um, that you wanted to get out of, an email or text message that you sent that somebody says that you misled them. By the way, if they ever lose money, they'll say that you lied to them. It doesn't matter how honest you are. They'll always just lie. That's what you do in litigation. You get onto the stand and you lie like hell to be able to try to win. Um, at least that's what everybody seems to do in that circumstance. And so we can see here that we're, there's, these are our most efficient, these, are the, these solutions are the most efficient ways to cover off of most all of the risk, most all of the time. Those are gonna be what your insurance policies cover. And then you know, as a Royal Legal Solutions customer, or member, that we, then we say, great, if you want bulletproof protection, this is where you have to start doing asset protection. So this is where you do like LLCs, DSTs, anonymous trusts, et cetera. So this is gets you to that 90%. You want to close that last 10% from the unlimited liability that can occur. This is where you're going to jump into the asset protection piece of it. Okay, Chris, I know you're dying to ask a question. I just want to get that out so we can get the full game plan of all of the thinking. Um, that goes Dude, I am just dying here. Dying. Yeah, tell me what's up, bro. No, no, no. I, I, I actually am one of the weird people who actually enjoy watching this kind of stuff. So um, I guess one of the rubs that I have with umbrella policies is that, you know, I've got a large one that covers, you know, myself, but, um, you know, I've got multiple entities and, uh, you know, it's like each entity has to get its own umbrella policy. Uh, unless somebody could tell me different, that's just what I'm bumping into. And it's just kind of a pain in the ass. Um, is that something you guys are addressing where, 
somebody could get in a sense one large umbrella policy and it you know you just list the properties maybe that uh, that you're involved in and, and have it all under that or do should I are you still gonna spread it out among uh, one person needs to get like four or five you will have however many entities they have they got to get in different individual policies um, for the so umbrella specifically yeah so I think the answer I'm going to give to this is always going to be that um, it's going to be on a case by case basis of what's going to be appropriate for each individual, as you can anticipate, right? And to right. So I'd say, let's get into a conversation about what's going to be appropriate to your situation. Mm-hmm. Now, what I can tell you is that there are um, one is uh, I don't know if Aaron would have the answer to that question off the top of his head around how, how, um, what type, whether we could add additional insurance to a single umbrella policy that might be a research item. Um, to have to pull in to say, hey, listen, can I take one umbrella policy in my name and then add all of my subsidiary companies, et cetera, as an additional insured to an existing umbrella policy? Um, might well, be- almost ideally, Scott, would be something where, I mean, I, obviously each property has to have its own insurance. I may have different partners. It's different states. Those I don't have a problem with. And, and, and even the umbrella policy would only... Well, I guess that's with any umbrella policy. It only comes into effect if the underneath policy, you know, if it goes beyond that. But I don't even necessarily need to have those. It's only if it comes to me, you know, if it breaks through the LLC or if it breaks through that initial barrier of, of insurance that I'd want that to come up. Um, yeah. So that's why I thought maybe if it just covered me. But it is complicated by the fact, like, I might own this house by myself, another one with one partner and a different one with two different partners is, is I, I'm just finding it obnoxious of, uh, you know, some partners may or may not want to pay for an umbrella policy or frankly don't have as many assets as I do and have different needs. Um, so if I could have just one policy that covers me, you know, as a, I don't know, just a, a last minute, uh, you know, prob- you know, coverage, if you know what I'm saying. <clears throat> yeah. So I think we, that's where we start getting into like some of the complications that you said, Chris, where it's like, Hey, it's different partners getting into it. But I would say at a high level, the really simple, easily repeatable way that I see people using these policies is that the umbrella policies apply to their personal liability. And because that's going to be like this stuff, right? My auto policy, that's going to bleed over because that's personal liability as it comes to me, right? Yeah. And that when I'm looking at my, um, what I typically see is then that for uh, anything that's going to be the real estate, real estate, what I'm actually looking at here is that that's my actual my property insurance. So my property insurance is going to cover me against anything that's going to be accidents relating to the real estate itself. That's going to be like grandma slipped and fell on the stairs, right? Something like mm-hmm. that. And says, that's how I protect uh, my individual real estate. And then if I want to protect my business, like uh, and if I have like a separate business income, then that's going to be my gen, gen, general liability policy, um, key man policies, you know, um, you know, uh, other stuff like that'd be like disability right? If I get hurt, you know, how right. sure that my business income still stay supported. Those are, I understand the buckets. Aaron, do you understand um, from the question about like umbrella policies? Is this, um, is that like an issue for you to research and then get back to us on like how umbrella policies can be added or not added as additional insureds, either like active businesses or directly tied to um, real estate? Yeah. So, I mean, it's definitely, it's definitely because, because you're right on that border of being like in need of a commercial policy as to just staying in that personal space. And so every one of them is going to be a case by case basis. It's about, it's about where is the insurable interest. And so you almost need to go into a commercial policy because these private, these personal policies are not set up. They're, they're kind of just like this. They're kind of like this package thing, right? And so it's it's uh no, I, I hear you because I have my auto and my uh, umbrella and my home. Well, actually, right. I wanted it all in one place. It used to be all in one place, but now that's you know with the kind of home I got, uh, well, it was easier, it's smarter to split it up. But you're right; it's right. totally different uh, as opposed to commercial. Uh, but yeah. even just within the commercial space, um, I've got you know. Potentially yeah. multiple umbrellas because of different entities and different partners, different states. Right. And that's that's the other issue is, is you run into, yes, I own all of these entities, but because of like indemnity and maintaining your anonymous stature in those, 
each one almost needs to have its own policy because otherwise when they go, somebody were to come after you and sue you, they'd be like, well, they're all covered under this one policy. So we can go after everything that he's got. Right. Got it. Yeah. I mean, insurance is. Well, let's, is, let's just go ahead and talk through like a little bit of what that process looks like, Chris. Um, because this, the process will apply to you as it apply to like everybody else, right? Because I think what we saw here at the end of this question of this discussion, this is what I picked up. This is actually a ton of moving parts, right? And how to get all those moving parts together, coordinated in a way that you're not going to have uh, policies that are going to basically protect you where you don't need it because it's already covered off on something else, right? That's a way that you can overspend on insurance is because you actually have too much um, in place. Um, and then it's also making sure that all of the key areas at least have like the minimum types of policies in place. So you don't end up with a gap and some hole, right? Because any type of like insurance hole means that you're really losing out on this, which is the really cost effective ways to cover off on your risk. Because insurance is always going to be the most cost effective way to cover off on risk. The alternative to insurance is lawyers fees and asset protection, which is always more expensive than insurance. But unfortunately, it's the only way to get to being bulletproof. Onto it, is add them together. Okay. So <clears throat> when we look at like, how does this work for us? What we always say is like, okay, great. What was the old way of doing this? Well, the old way of being able to cover off on your insurance, right? Is that you would just go to somebody who is like general, right? This is going to be like state farm commercial. You say like, oh, cool. I'm just going to, I saw that number on state on the commercial there. I'm going to call up state farm and I'm just going to see what they do to me or do, do for me rather into it. Then the other way that you could go with this is like, well, who's local? Who's in my community? Who do they use? That'd be another way to be able to vet it. You go to your meetup group, say, well, who are you guys using for your insurance? And I was like, oh, I use Bob down the street. He's great about like what he does with it. Right. Um, and and typically what I found is, um, or you could say like, who do I find online, right? And then when you look online, what you're relying on is a star basis typically, right? How many stars do they got? They got good stars. They got good reviews. All right, well, I'll give them a call. I'll give them a shot, right? <clears throat> uh, this has some like detractors, right? This guy's, are they real estate? Specific providers, like how well they understand the needs of a real estate. Are they business providers? And then if they are, how well do they know how these two work together? So I end up with gaps. Even if I do this old way of doing it, I still end up with huge gaps on how well do they really understand all the things that I really need? Or am I going to have to research on my own and then come to this person and tell them this is what I think I'm needing? Are they reactive to whatever I'm asking them for? Or are they proactive and telling me like, listen, we understand the models of the business you're running. And then we can recommend to you um, integrated strategies that are, that are broader to you. So the new way of doing this is going to be real estate and small business specific provider. So it's finding the agent. Um, this is going to be the agent or the broker is going to say, listen, I just serve people that are in this, these camps, right? I'm not looking to do anybody else besides people in this camps. I'm not trying to grab auto policies from Bob down the street. I'm just helping people that have these types of business objectives and looking at what are going to be all the solutions that's appropriate for them. They have to be specific to real estate and small business to be effective for you. Otherwise, it's too watered down. Their knowledge level of like what's really needed here is going to be too watered down to be able to really get deep into the details of finding those efficient solutions. Um, then with the new way of doing this is high availability as well. Why? Because real estate and business, right, is high change. Buying and selling assets, your risk pro profile can change depending upon like what properties you got into. And then what be, might be going on inside of your business is also always changing. So you need a relationship with somebody who is going to be available right? To be able to talk to you and adjust your policies 
I, and be able to do that way that's really efficient because I don't know about you guys, but I don't love talking about insurance. I don't want to spend more than an hour on it a quarter and talking about what are the proper insurance policies that I need to have in place and are there any adjustments. So if you're a Royal Legal Solutions member, you know that's part of your peace of mind program as you have these unlimited contacts with our staff to be able to cover off on those issues as you need to. The other piece here is you're going to say, uh, what is a uh, scope, scope of providers. So the way that these businesses work is that when you have like an agent or a broker, there's people that are like here, like we had here, that was for our, our state farm example. Oh, that was right here. So here for our state farm example, all that you're able to do is go to state farm and say, Hey, state farm, what do you offer? That's one provider that they're able to go to, to be able to help shop on the price for you. And what they will do is they'll try to use whatever relationship they have to you to be able to make you fit inside of State Farm's model, right? The new way of doing this is to incorporate as many providers as you can. So here we're thinking that you need 50 plus providers to really be able to get the scope that, of the things that Chris was talking about of what's my flexibility of all of the things that I have going on. Um, can you find providers that are gonna have the most aggressive or most advantageous policy for me for all those different areas? Say, so great. So you need actually a huge list of providers to make sure you can cover off on those issues um, for this type of client. And because all the things that can go on to the client and you need enough providers to make sure that it's gonna be the cost efficient solution for you. So you're looking for people that have over 50 plus providers that they can get to. Um, any other thoughts before we go into like what we're offering and how um, I've designed this uh, Royal insurance here with Aaron, um, any other thoughts here on the old way versus the new way in terms of this is how we understand the existing challenges that real estate investors and small business owners have that are inside of our community and what we understand of like what a better model would look like. What is the newer way of how the model look like? Jeff, go ahead. I got to see your hands up, bud. Yeah. I'm. Uh one of the reasons probably folks like Chris and I or whomever might end up having like multiple insurance agents is that, you know, have these assets in different states. So, you know, we were, yesterday we were talking about uh, taxes and I mentioned I have a condo in Hawaii. Well, I went to my existing insurance company uh, and they're like, yeah, we're not licensed to do insurance in Hawaii. So you start having assets in, in California and in Washington and Hawaii and you end up just you know, with a spider's web of insurance relationships. So besides being able to represent multiple companies, which is awesome, uh, you got to be licensed in the different states too. So you're looking for um, nationwide insurance providers and then nationwide licensing. Yep. Because what I'm really looking for here is single point of contact. Yeah, exactly. Like, so I think I found the threshold for getting the owner of my local insurance guy who I have my home and, and everything under uh, when uh, we're spending like $25,000 a year on insurance now because the apartments up in the Seattle area is about $15,000 a year, our home and everything and our car is about five. And so all of a sudden, like I'm talking to the person about it and it's like, okay, that's the threshold. Okay. But Still, like, okay, we have a single family rental property in Texas. Do you guys do that? No, you can't do that. Oh, we have a new condo in Hawaii. Can you do that? No, we can't do that. So, yeah, like now I've got, I've got, well, we sold the place in Texas, but like, you know, regardless, you're, you've got four relationships because the insurance companies don't cover, you know, Texas. They don't cover Texas. They don't cover Hawaii. Hawaii is a special case, I guess. And, and, and so besides a nationwide coverage, because even as you might end up with three or four different insurance companies, you know, I'm happy, I don't know, nationwide here, travelers there, state farm there, whatever it is, somebody who can be a broker and, and support insurance with different companies, whatever the best coverage is for that asset. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's that nationwide coverage. It's, it's not having to have like four or five different people you have to call. Cool. Um, so really it's, I need who can, who actually has like the insurance product, but then also like, I need to make sure that the agent that I'm dealing with that can also be, uh, is can sell me into all these different products or set up these different products for me. And that I'd love it if it's a single point of contact. So I only have one person I ever have to talk to, and then they're going to go figure out on the back end how it needs to work. 
And I just, and like really at the end of the day, it's like, I just don't want to deal with it. I have to stay organized. Yep. That level of it for my injury. Yep. Right. Yep. Cool. Perfect. Um, Go ahead, Aaron. I saw you like raise your hand, bud. Um, do you, you want to chime in on something with here or should we go to Chris? Well, yeah, I was just going to say really quick. The, so that's one of the biggest things is the multi-state, right? And so your local guys, it costs money for them to be able to be licensed in other states, right? And then you also have like different legalities, state to state. Um, I don't know how much Scott wants to get into it right now with with what we're doing it currently we're licensed in like Let, let's let's wait until we get all of the other pieces up from yeah. chris and jeff and everybody else because yeah. that's how we get old way and the new way and then we'll be able to know exactly what points to talk to about what's going to be important for this group uh, around uh, around insurance there but great great thing i love the enthusiasm and to, as, Gary, as you can tell aaron's a go-getter he's like so stoked on being able to help people with insurance more than anybody else i've ever met in my life you know into it so, and he's a long time business owner, Aaron, as he actually owned a, uh, like a car, multiple like car repair, like facilities, like from his family, like different types of like pawn shops and all kinds of like other businesses um, into it. And so what we've done is just take that high, what, what, I, what I've done with Aaron is like, I identified him as like, hey, he's extremely high level executor, a very professional uh, business builder, entrepreneur type. And then we have deep connections into, um, and of course, his own experience and his family with insurance for so long, but also like deep coaching and, and other uh, professionals brought into that to be able to create this super unique offering. Um, but in case, I uh, just want to make sure to touch on that so everybody has a feel for Aaron's background of, of who we're doing business with here together. Um, Chris, go ahead and shoot that. And what do you got, bud? Hey, um, well, just a few quick questions about, I, I'm, I'm making assumptions. This is not just for rentals, but it's for fix and flips as well. Is that correct? Yeah. My understanding is that we don't have any limitations on what we can offer um, okay. or, or where we can offer it. So we have, um, we can get in that here like in a minute about like how, how we're able to do that um, and what's different about why we're able, what, why and how. Um, but yeah, go ahead. Next piece. Okay. Okay. So yeah, my follow-up to that, and you can either answer this now or later, is that uh, you, you look, no matter how much you try, very often at these fix and flips, you, you just have some sellers that, you know, it's you'll lose a deal if you don't get it quick. Uh, and it doesn't matter how efficient you are, there are times when I need insurance, and I need it, you know, within 24 hours. Uh, now, look, if you're just establishing a relationship with somebody, I, I get it. You know, you're going to need a little more time. But if you guys can get in the process where, you know, you're fixing flippers out there, you know, some of us who do 20, 30 properties at a time, you know, we've established a relationship with you. If you can make it where it's really quick. I mean, if I have to fax a request or if I got to call somebody or if I got to even email somebody, that, that's usually not the best. What the best that I've seen out there is where they have some online form. I just fill it out real quick with the specifics and I usually get an email or uh, something that I get a declaration page within less than 24 hours. If, if that is something you guys provide, I, I think that's going to be a lot more competitive. Um, if you guys even offer month to month uh, rather than six months at a time payments, that's going to be competitive. Um, but really how fast you can do it uh, and, you know, and having online requests, uh, and month to month, those, those are huge things. Um, one last thing that's kind of with the rentals that, uh, I don't know if you're going to discuss or not, maybe this is case by case basis, but I've been considering, uh, going to, um, liability only with some of my rental properties. And the thought process goes like this, you know, if you've got, a hundred rental properties that are not next to each other and they're all over the city, you know, you end up paying more in insurance sometimes annually than if one house burnt down a year. So, uh, you know, if it's, you know, like if, it's all, if they're all connected and there's a big fire, there's a big storm, I guess you could argue you could have multiple and that would not work. But um, I don't know if that's something that people do, but uh, it, it sounded more attractive to me considering it's pretty darn rare that a house burns down, even though I just had one last week, but. <laughs> oh man. Well, so it sounds like we got a couple of issues here too. So what I, I, what I hear from you, Chris, is that what I'd really like to do is have an established relationship um, where then I can just go on online, submit through like a form uh, through your online portal. And that within 24 hours, I get a tech page 
and that we're not sure about like how it could work on the policy side, but like something that would allow us to do like a month to month uh, with these policies is more attractive to me than having to do more cash up front because it doesn't hit my cash flows as bad. Yeah. All right. Now, ACH payments I mean, is the only way that you guys could feasibly make that work because you're not going to wait for a check every month. That's just ridiculous. Yeah. So you can have some parameters around that. But um, I could talk further about that later if, if you need to, only because uh, I've had experience I with- I'm going to bet that you and Aaron are going to have a great conversation and that me you and Aaron should have a great conversation about like what some of your vision is around that of like how the business would need to be, um, what intention we could- t- I don't know what things we're going to be able to necessarily do until we- uh, on these issues as it sits uh, for like payment stuff in line until we actually get a little bit more research onto it. Um, mm-hmm. But I always love is let's set an intention for like, where is that business heading towards of what we know would be the optimal solution and say like, cool, how can we make progress towards that intention? So maybe we don't have to be perfect from the start. We can just start, but knowing where we're building to into it. Does that makes sense. Yep. <laughs> um, and then I hear you too about the liability only with some properties and cost of insurance versus cost of loss. And so this issue is actually a separate issue that's more advanced that we should cover off in that meeting and start talking about like insurance captives or like other things that we can do in that vein. And to it, we might find that insurance captive is actually a great option for us to pull together insurances as a community and to be able to overall reduce all of our insurance rates um, in aggregate. Um, so we'll have to see what options exist for us here, but this is the easy piece. The insurance captain and stuff like that starts to get much more complex and more difficult to do. But um, these, this, this piece here is much more accomplishable in the short term uh, for us. But I'm all, I'm all about let's brainstorm big vision, set intentions, and then say, cool, how can we track to it month over month? Um, so we talked about here, guys, is some of like the new ways. Uh, so we have some like different um, SLAs we talked about inside of like new ways that like insurance companies uh, should work. And so this is what we're doing inside of, um, I'll share with you some of what we're doing and some of the intentions that we have for, um, so for Royal Insurance. So Royal Insurance, what we're seeking to create here is the, is the part of the RLS one-stop shop And in that theme, we're looking to create dedicated point of contact. Dedicated point of contact here with Aaron Porter as the principal of the insurance. Now, as this scales, right, we know how that's going to work, right? Aaron's going to bring in somebody else that's awesome that everybody loves. We're going to train the heck out of that person into the systems and processes and make sure that continues to run smooth. And that just like we do with Royal Legal Solutions, everybody who's a member of the Royal Insurance always has direct contact to Aaron, but they know that let's just call him Bob, that Bob would eventually be doing the day-to-day, right? Because eventually what we want Aaron to be doing is scouting out, hey, what other options do we have for us that's going to overall make our insurances more efficient, right? And we want Bob to be able to make those 24-hour turnaround times on the SLAs and grabbing the forms off of the website and making sure that that's happening for everybody. Um, so we also are going part of like in the process here too, is a dedicated insurance page, uh, on RLS website with a contact form and a quote form. So this is where I think that part of what you were talking about, Chris, It's probably here, like new contact form with us would be like, who's interested in talking to us? And that quote form is this thing would lead to a deck page being sent for like established relationships or otherwise, right? Something in here where it's like, we'll capture the information. We already have that technology with HubSpot. We can do that and push that out. Um, For our, so now we have, um, this is the scope of what the touch and feel is and the intention. Those are our intention and touch and feel. Um, or we could call this like a service level agreement of how we're looking at what that service level is going to look like. And then here's, this is where we look at like our providership. So what we have uh, negotiated out currently, this is our current scope of offerings. Um, We have 68 carriers. We have 68 direct to carrier relationships. So this is... 68 direct-to-carrier 68, uh, direct relationships 
Um, we have 63 um, relationships for life. This is 63 direct relationships on like liability, any type of liability policy, 63 for life, and then 36 uh, carriers for like annuities or other types of insurance investments. So when you're looking at what is going to be like the scope of my liability policies, we're going to be able to run that through 68 different carriers. When you're looking at, hey, when I'm looking at my life insurance, my overfunded whole life, my infinite banking, what any of those things are, we're going to be able to price that out against 63 competitors. And then if we're looking at, hey, what are those insurance related products that I might want to look at um, or be introduced to, um, that's going to be 36 related products as you come to it. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, the majority of what everybody's going to offer here ain't going to be for us. There's going to be a sliver of like what actually comes out to be the, the pieces that are going to be most useful for us to us most of the time. The reason that we push so many carriers in is so that way we can always be, um, we're going to be always the most cost efficient. And most diverse. and most holistic. So the idea is, is that with, we have a single relationship here with Aaron, Aaron meets with you. Then we say, great, we learn about what the insurance needs are that we wanna investigate. We'll run that through all the different carriers because we have so much competition, how quickly that we can run this by the carriers. It's much faster than you'd ever be able to do on your own because of our relationships that are direct carrier. You would actually have to do these individual phone calls with individual agents to be able to scout out which one of these carrier options are. So that's how we can have the most cost efficient solution for you. Um, also the most um, you know, time efficient as well as we just covered. We also get the most diverse types of coverage because some types of coverage that they might offer in one carrier might be different on another. So as your business changes or as your needs might change that this allows us the most flexibility to know, great, what's gonna be that new best policy for that new situation Aaron figures that out onto what carrier that's going to go into and then be able to, to slot you into the right place. And then it's also the most holistic because we're working not with on just one area of your life, right? We're able to help you with uh, any, any type of policy that you would have, whether that's going to be your property insurance, your umbrella policies, your life policies, et cetera. So uh, learn. So that way your, your, you know, your life policies, your property, your umbrella, any other policies you have work underneath like one system of coverages that we have and who's who quarterbacks at all, who makes sure that it's all right. Who makes sure it's all more efficient. It's in one person's brain. So that takes your brain out of the equation, right? You just have to come in clearly with what are the scope of here's what I'm doing. Here's the, and we form you. So your responsibilities are scope of business, our responsibility is best practices. So you come in to this meeting with Aaron. You say, hey, this is everything I got going on. And we're going to come back to you with this. This is what best practices look like for somebody in your situation. And then let's talk what that costs. And then you'll get to, here's the decision or partial decision. Either I want to implement all of that or I want to implement some of it. If I'm only going to implement some of it, what is the most important stuff for me to implement? So I can know where to prioritize my budget. Um, we're going to do all of this through also initially, just for right now, because I'm uh, hand in hand on everything here. We're just going to send everything to scott at royallegalsolutions.com if you want to get into a meeting with Aaron. And then I'm going to work on setting up those meetings with the internal team here to make sure that we can get all coordinated. And then I'll be in those meetings with you guys. Um, so that way we can dial in all, all of the additional needs, concerns, et cetera, uh, that we might have. Um, as we continue to start get more defined on like, Hey, what is the intention? Where, where is the, where is the absolute best offering the absolute best service that we can give for our community as it relates to insurance. So I think Liz dropped it there in the chat as well, too. If you guys want to shoot an email off to me, then we can uh, get the team to organize those meetings up. Cool.